Hello, people. Uh, sound author. And this is the second part in my demo, or I guess you could say sneak peek at Undertow, my new preset library for Yuhi Zebra 2. And today I'm going to go through the pads and the atmospheres. And I did not have as many atmospheres and pad sounds that I thought I would when I started this library. Uh, actually, it's mostly sequences and, you know, drum sounds and percussive things. Um, that's okay, because I need to do more of that stuff anyway, so. Um, but there are plenty of pads and uh, a good, you know, handful of atmospheric sounds. Some of the pad sounds might make their way uh, into this AT prefix. I don't know. I still have a little bit of polishing up to do. But anyway, some of these pads are really uh, vintage-y sounding, like this one. <laughs> super saw pad with a little bit of noise sweeps going on in the background and as I stated in the previous video all of the pads have each and every one of these four XY pads routed to various things and some of the XY routing for the pads is uh, pretty creative uh, obviously the filter <laughs> from it being a pad to sort of a ambient pluck or whatever the obvious chorus and delay reverb <laughs> that's the sound of the range parameter in the reverb being moved it uh, actually you can hear an audible movement in pitch or what is perceived as pitch Anyways, I have something in the piano roll because this Crystal Palace pad has some MSCGs that uh, are basically opening up return channels uh, with delay, and they're at very different times, and they result in these arbitrary delays from left to right. And because of this, in live performance, because of MIDI latency, you get some unpleasant clicks and pops. And it's just, I haven't been able to use it for live performance. So I kind of have to have specifically this pad sound in the sequencer. Uh, so that sounds like this. A little resonant. And everything is pretty much under control if you keep it in the sequencer, but if you try to get fancy with live performance, just for this one, just for this pad sound. Clickety pop, you know, it, it does that. It's temperamental, this one. But that's not a problem with the rest of these pads, so don't worry about it. Just wanted to show you that. Uh, this is quite nice. A lot of the pads that I made for this library 
are a lot darker than I usually do. I, I went really dark for this one, and uh, this one uses quite a big ring modulation. I'm using more ring modulation these days in the sideband modules, which are really a good alternative to uh, flangers and phasers. This is an interesting spectral effect to tweak in real time. Very sensitive. And something that I like to do with the mod effects, which is basically the chorusing, is you'll see the feedback here on actually both the feedback for mod effects one and two. Uh, so if I go to the right corner, it'll turn the feedback up for the chorusing effects and <laughs> it creates a howling sound that's creepy and weird, but cool. <laughs> get crazy with a lot of these sounds uh, you can certainly go crazy it helps if you're a little crazy I already showed you Dark Odyssey in the last video very nice sound same thing with the mod effects I do that in a lot of the mod effects XY pads because if you add just a little bit of it, if you add just a little bit of it, it can add some character and it's not obviously going on. It's a nice one. Resonance. This one is really simple sounding, uh, but I hear it in television and film scores and game scores all the time. It's that kind of low, submerged, resonant, howling sound. This Creepify control does what it says. Creeps you out.
this one is bordering dangerously close to being included in the pluck sounds. It originally started out as an organ sound, and then I think I added some FM, and uh, that all changed. So that's a nice one. This is very blade runnery. to be used sparingly uh, not something you want to uh, use heavily it's just pretty much for that low end body that you want for those big sounds Mentat drone uh, it is by will alone I set my mind in motion. Yes, that's from Dune. Those are mentats. And this is one of the most CPU intensive pad sounds in the entire library, so use it sparingly. Lots going on here. Prepare to drop frames. <laughs> That's not the patch, guys. Uh, I'm running my uh, open broadcaster screencast software in tandem with the built-in FL Studio ASIO driver. I usually use ASIO for all. So when you hear clicks and pops and nasty things, that's because I'm not using the best audio driver right now. So it's not the patch. Trust me. audio driver isn't processing this patch very well. But you can hear it's pretty complex. There we go, something nice. It is even with the ASIO for all driver, your your CPU can get up there to about fifty percent, uh, just with a couple of notes pressed down. It's fully polyphonic, but yeah, use it sparingly. Metal blanket. This is probably going to be included in the atmospheres. Because I did some interesting things with the uh, XY pads, uh, and you can transform this sound completely. You can, uh, change the pitch of the comb filters. And watch this. <laughs> this decay. Uh, this becomes very weird very quickly
If you want to get experimental and you want to go way out on the fringes of whatever, this is one to experiment with. I think I'm going to probably include this in the atmosphere. This is my favorite pad in the entire library because of how subtle it is, how dark it is, uh, and it's kind of creepy yet emotive at the same time. kind of beautiful too and uh like i said uh when i have azio for all going on all of these pad sounds are much higher resolution much warmer much fuller they sound kind of uh resonant uh, with this audio driver but let's keep moving on This is one of my favorites. Uh, it's got kind of a reverse thing going on in the background. Uh, nice with chords. In slower tempos, I think those MSCGs will slow down just a bit. Got those reversed sounds to not be as resonant. You can kind of warm them up. And then, if you want to open up that super saw,
It's got a lot of texture to it. I like that one. This one is very mellow. It's a little CPU intensive. There's a lot going on here. Um, it's very mellow, very warm. It almost has kind of a clarinet characteristic. It's weird. <laughs> it goes from being warm and beautiful to not. It's just there if you want it. I kind of like where it is. It's kind of, it's kind of there, you know, it's kind of a sad sound. Uh, and uh, you need that sometimes. I like this one. It's very simple. But you can unreverse it. You can unreverse the reverse bell. By taking this XY controller and doing this with it, this is going to get interesting. <laughs> Check this out. This is a weird sound. This is messing around with the FM envelopes. I just like that. Especially when you detune. atmospheric by changing the pitch of the modulators in the carrier. All of a sudden, it's, it's not musical, it's atmospheric now. A little musical. Not really. <laughs> but, like I said, that control is there if you need it. If you want to experiment and do crazy stuff with automation or whatever, it's there. Oh, I really like this one. So simple. Um, very Casio CZ inspired phase distortion pad. Very warm. Um, but I just like that sound. And I did something with the envelope, with the amplitude envelope. Uh, the harder you hit the keys, uh, the quicker the attack and release. Uh, and so when you play soft, you get the pad sound. <laughs> the keys it gets a little bit more almost a Van Halen 
jump kind of sound, but not really, because uh, if you you look at it through a scope. <laughs> Keyboardist. Let me warm it up a little bit. Yeah, I just love that vintage sound. So that's one of my favorite pad sounds. This one is kind of a happy ac accident. I was experimenting with organ sounds and then I started playing around with this bit crusher ba filter, basically. It's a sample rate reduction uh, and it created these high frequencies. So I thought that sounds kind of cool. I, and then I ran it through a filter and then I messed around with a split dual algorithm. And it sounds like this. And if you run that through a scope and you look at the audio signal, or if you run it through a spectral analyzer, you'll see the high frequency content dancing around. Uh, and this... Uh, SR decimate filter is helping to create these extra harmonics that weren't there before. And then I'm taking the comb filter and then I'm messing around with the tuning to, to kind of do what a spectral effect, sort of kind of what a spectral effect would do. <laughs> Obviously, some vibrato going on there. That is actually having a dramatic effect on the sound even though it's not obvious but it is it is changing the sound so you can hear it see there it is so that's the spectral organ this one is kind of comes in slow but it adds something and i don't yep i did science fiction -y. Okay. This is another one of the very CPU-intensive pad sounds. A lot going on with comb filters, frequency modulation, lots of filtration. I used every single one of the filters uh, up here. I don't know if I did for the effects. Pretty much. I think I just got one left that I didn't use. Lots of filtration, very CPU intensive, so take it easy. You don't need much. Sounds really cool up in the high ranges. It has a kind of a reedy sound. that uh 
go crazy with pol polyphony, uh, you know, something might happen. There's a lot going on here, so just a, a note or two. Don't go crazy. Because there's so much filtration going on, uh, this doesn't seem obvious, but it's there's a method to the madness. You can slow down the LFOs because of phase cancellations and all kinds of weird things that are going on. Some things might not slow down. feedback sound uh but yeah there's a lot going on so uh, slow down turbo and last but not least is this sound fully polyphonic and uh i think it's really good to intro something <laughs> Again, it's pretty complex, lots of filtration, so three, four notes for a pad. Don't go crazy. Um, but like I said, because of this audio driver, everything is less efficient. Moving on to the atmospheres. Uh, some of the pad sounds, like I said, will probably be included in the atmospheres, like this metal blanket sound. Uh, so let's start from the top. Uh, this one, I was trying to reproduce the sound that Spectrosonics uh, included in their new Omnisphere sound library. They used uh, a stalactite or in a cave, and they hit it with a mallet, and it created these interesting harmonics. And I thought that sound was so fascinating. I wanted to try my hand at maybe you know creating something like that. I didn't succeed. Uh, <laughs> it sounds nothing like that, but I thought it sounded interesting enough. Uh, so I kept it. It sounds like this. Not musical at all, <laughs> um, but it does its job. It creates an atmosphere. And if you want to use that as a pad sound, well, not a pad sound, but give it that slow attack. You can still kind of hear the exci excitation in the comb filters. Sorry about those clicks and pops. That's my. That's the. Yeah. Doing this on a budget, guys. You won't experience any of these problems if you're using ASIO for all or anything better. So yeah, it's a nice atmosphere. 
This one gets crazy because you're going to use uh, mess around with modulator and carrier pitch. Listen to this. Oh yeah. You can almost create a whole library of crazy, wacky atmospheres with just this one preset. not intended at first to do that but when I was doing the XY routing I was thinking yeah what would I like to do with these you know uh, since uh, I hate was like you know I'm tired of you know filter drive I thought yeah let's do something different and so this almost kind of became like a kit uh, to create your own crazy weird atmospheres <laughs> It's weird. <laughs> Real weird. Speaking of weird, this is um, big and creepy and has no XY routing at the moment. But it sounds like this. Lots of ring modulation going on here. Comb filters, FMOs, I think even a little bit of wavetable. Yep. Uh, it's a hybrid. I really like that one. It's uh, it's got a lot of character. Hostile intents. It's actually the same preset as this pluck down here called S uh, Spectrum Bell. It's the same. It's the same preset with a little bit of different routing, as you can see here. But when I pitched it down. It took on a completely different characteristic. That's not intended as filler, the, the, because the spectrum bell, I changed some things. So they are technically different, but they, they did, this came from the spectrum bell plug. I pitched it down, I changed some of the routing just a little bit, and um, I don't think it has any, no. But it, I just thought that was special. So that's why that's there. Immensify. It actually is musical. Lots of distortion here. It almost kind of has the characteristic of a heavily distorted electric guitar routed through tons of reverb and delay. Distortion. Uh, it, it almost sounds like 
electricity when you get up here in the top right corner. Sounds like a wolf howling at the moon. No XY routing yet. Coming soon. But this one, pure atmosphere. For your creepy detective show needs. really like the alteration in the pitch. Uh, it's pretty cool. Never tell. Um, I like this one a lot. If you listen to the high frequencies, there's almost some, uh, a water foam kind of uh, dissonance. That's kind of what I was going for. Listen to these mid-high frequencies. The ones that sneak through. Hear that? That, that metallic grinding sound. There it is, right there. But it's it's so organic. Uh, it's that that you can't you can't predict what's going to happen in this patch. This is just ring modulation, frequency modulation, using an XMF filter, modulating the frequency modulation within the XMF filter. I'm sending things through, and uh, yeah. Lots of parallel stuff, mixing things back in after uh, distorting things with compression by slamming the attack and release parameters down. I like that sound. Uh, I find it very different than using the distortion module. It creates its own kind of dis distortion that's very unique, uh, especially for pad sounds if you want to just mix it in just a little bit. Anyway, get too techy on you. Squish squash. This is a, a looping kind of sound. It's almost rhythmic, but it, it was one of those passages that I was messing with, and I was just experimenting, and this happened. That's why I felt the music. <laughs> I 
I don't know what you would use that for, um, but I thought it sounded so interesting that I got to a point when I was tweaking knobs where I was just like, wait, stop. That's unique. Save it. <laughs> I, that happens every once in a while where I'm like, don't touch it. That's perfect. Um, yo, yo, Prime. Which is the home planet of the Predators. And one of the reasons why I called it Yautia Prime is because if you move the modulator pitch down here, you will hear the sound of a f familiar reptilian friend. Get to the chopper! Yeah. <laughs> Very science fiction. Yeah, pretty far out there. Uh, and that's it for the pads and the atmospheres. Um, I might make another video for just the plucks and uh, the bass sounds. But until then, uh, I hope you've enjoyed this. Uh, <coughs> sorry. Undertow uh, might be delayed just a bit because I'm having a pretty nasty ear infection and it's making it difficult to do anything with sound because it's hindering my hearing in my left ear. It even hurts just a little bit to wear the headphones right now, so I gotta get these headphones off. Uh, but I wanted to get this demo out for you. But uh, if if everything goes well and there are n no more complications, I should be able to get this out to you by Christmas. Uh, and this library will be offered for a limited time. Uh, pay what you want. And um, I think sometime next year I will be asking something like eleven ninety nine, uh, which I think is fair for 84 presets, most of which involved uh, an extraneous amount of programming. So, there you go. Hope you enjoy this video.